we're back at it. We got another video for you. So today we're going to discuss, which is part two to a video we've already made, is what does it take to be a mobile locksmith or what do you need to be a mobile locksmith? So we made a previous video called what does it take to be a locksmith, I believe is what it's called. And we went through that whole video and now we decided we were going to make you a part two, which we promised earlier, about what does it take to be a mobile locksmith. Well, this is inside of one of our mobile locksmith vans. Okay, this is our... Uh, what is it, the Ford, I think it's a 250 is what it's called. Um, this is a medium roof, so they do have one step higher with a higher roof, but the standard one's lower than this. This is a medium and then there's a large, so. Um, anyway, so now that I'm in our uh, our vehicle here, it is raining right now, so it may sound like a tin can with the rain hitting on this, so hopefully it doesn't interrupt too much. But uh, let's discuss what you need. All right, so let's start with all the big pieces first, then we'll go from there, okay? So what does it take to be a mobile locksmith? Well, you need a truck first, right? Now, when I first started this, I had an F-150. Very hard to make that into a service vehicle, but I put on a really high camper and made the best of it, right? Well, now we've, we're a little bit bigger now. We have more funds and more capital to, to provide better service vehicle. So this is our favorite service vehicle. Um, anyway, so on this one here, of course, you need to have your, uh, you need to have a grinder. You need to have a vise, which the vise is over there. That way, when you're modifying tail pieces or cutting screws and things like that, you're going to need those two uh, um, tools. <clears throat> so have your grinder, your vise, definitely your HPC machine, which is your originator. You need to cut original keys. A lot of locksmith trucks I noticed don't have these on there. Uh, some of them make space and depth keys and things like that. But if you can get it, get it. It's good to have an HPC machine. And if not, you need to have a backup. <clears throat> These are great, but they, of course they only work for one keyway, the blue punch, which you made a video, you can click on that up here and check that out. But um, we made a video on reviewing this. So this is, if you don't have an HPC machine, then you're gonna need something like this to cut originals, but this only cuts Schlage originals. Then there's one for quick set, there's one for IC core. So if you're doing a lot of master reeking and things like that, definitely get you the blue punch because it's so much quicker. Schlage is 90% of those keyways anyway. So have a blue punch or at least an HPC machine if you can, if you uh, want to be able to do more. <clears throat> then you're going to also need a duplicator. This is just the Ilco 044 duplicator, standard duplicator. So there's your main machines, your vice, grinder, HPC machine, or blue punch machine, and duplicator. <clears throat> Originator duplicator. Uh, and you're going to have to have a power inverter, which in our view, we have another video, if you click up here, you can view the how to make a service vehicle. We, we broke down how to set up everything in there. So I would watch how to set up the service vehicle. Uh, we have a video on that. I can't remember what it's titled at the time. And then uh, what does it take to be a locksmith? And this one is what does it take to be a mobile locksmith? So <clears throat> you do need power, inverter, marine battery tied into your system. You can watch the vehicle putting together a service vehicle to find out more details on that. Of course, a pin kit. You got my pin kit. You got to have your pin kit. <clears throat> so your machines, your pin kits. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about what's in these drawers. So for instance, let's just go through them a little at a time. So in here, he's got like J hooks and things. If you're running wire for, for uh, camera systems and stuff, you'll need all the little different types of hooks and things to keep the wire suspended and, uh, off the ceiling tiles. Uh, <clears throat> he's got all kinds of things in here. Like uh, you'll need stock wise, you might need some push paddles, uh, some mortise bodies, deadbolt bodies, a lot of things for storefront glass doors. Um, as well as you know standard things like we use uh, a little buzz-in systems we use Seiko arm receivers and and remotes to, to accomplish that <clears throat> so he has all a good variety of parts in here to handle most things that we do Let me put that back and then we have right here <clears throat> if you're going to be doing automotive uh, we have a very good variety of metal automotive keys just so you can make duplicates first. And then of course, you're gonna have your, your chip keys if you're in automotive, as well as, let me grab it, have a, a programmer on your vehicle, be good too, so you can program your car keys. This is a uh, smart box mini. So I have a programmer, if you do automotive, if you do automotive, you wanna have a good variety of metal blanks for your standard Ford, Dodge, um, Chevy, Chrysler, things like that. And then a good variety of chip keys also. <clears throat> then, you're gonna need a lot of things like miscellaneous small screwdrivers, little hook tools and probe tools and multi-screwdrivers, small, big, everything. Um, maybe some keycaps and things like that that customers like to put on their keys. 
Uh, we also have many different varieties of keys that we use to break into things, bump keys, you know, things along those lines. I don't want to go into too much depth of that. <clears throat> and then, uh, of course, if you're in automotive, you have your, your leashy tools that you'll need to read the cuts, uh, maybe an easy reader or two, so that you can decipher what the cuts are to those keys and then program them. Uh, you'll want to keep many miscellaneous things like this all the way. You want to keep springs, multi-screens and clips and things like that off scrap parts because when you need them, you need them. So I always keep those parts just in case. You also want to have a good variety of, you know, things like this, for instance, these little hex head bits so that you can do self tappers that there's much easier to screw in a self tapper if you're not using a, if you use a Phillips head and something skips out sometimes, so it's better to use these. So a good variety of those. <clears throat> We've got extension cords, of course. Um, down here, we have a snake for running wire. Definitely good to have one of those. We have a big one, a small one. We have uh, caulking for sealing uh, holes and things on camera systems. We have a big uh, set in here of um, socket set for bolting down safes. <clears throat> and as we keep going, we got extra pins because when your pins run out in your, in your kit, you're going to need some extra pins to put in there. Uh, also, you'll need a, a Dremel. We have a Dremel. A Dremel so you can cut out the frames for electric strikes, things like that. Um, and of course, you're going to want all your different varieties of keys. You're going to want all your standard residential keys, your KW1s, KW10s, SC1s, SC4s, Y11s, Y13s, Y14s. There's tons of keys in here. Your, your national keys for mailboxes, um, a whole bunch of keys. So <clears throat> you could even get with some of these suppliers too and say, hey, can I get a starter pack? And they give you like the 500 most popular keys and X amount of quantities of them. And they'll ship them out to you. Um, so just random key blanks or Schlage varieties. I used to kind of put, put them and separate them out into different little bins. <clears throat> you got pre-cuts when you're re-keying, you need some pre-cut keys. Uh, so have a good variety of keys. And if you're in automotive, then keep, keep your automotive also. You have your sergeant, your best, you know, things like that. You need a plug spinner. This will be a good one to have, a good tool to have when starting. If you pick a lock in the wrong direction, this will basically, this will flip it over for you to where you can, um, if you pick it the wrong way, you just hit that and it shifts it back over for you so you can pull the lock off. So a plug spinner, you definitely need a set of uh, tweezers for your pin kit when you're reeking. Uh, followers, a multi-follower set like this is good and a solid follower. <clears throat> There's a lot of different tools you can use. Um, down here, you got, we have a lot of stuff in here for like upsell purposes, you know, peepholes, extra pins for a pin kit strike boxes to reinforce your frame so so we can while we're out there you want to create more sales you don't want to just be depending on hey, I need you to come out and re my house and do exactly what they want you want to try to stimulate other uh, sales opportunities so hey you know you have a single cylinder deadbolt in the store you know if someone wants to they can break the window reach in and open it you want me to put a double cylinder on there for you sure you know so there's an upsell or hey you know I know you're really concerned about uh, security you know if you want I can put a strike box in your frame and X amount of money and it'll reinforce the frame against uh, your frame against being kicked in. So you have those available so you can get those extra sales while you're out in the field. That's that's a big area I think most most companies miss out on it is customer says I want this, they go out and they do that and then they're done. And they complain about why their sales never grow or why they're never able to get more business and that well it's not just gonna it's not gonna be handed to you. So if you want more business then make sure you have what's available and when you're out there offer it. And then if you offer it half the time, you're going to get, you're going to get the sale a lot of times. So I would carry extra stock like door guardians, strike boxes, peepholes, things like that. Those are very easy upsells, double cylinder deadbolts, single cylinder deadbolts, just new hardware in general. Um, so our guys, I mean, I, I, I know probably, probably at least an upsells a year, at least a hundred thousand dollars in upsells a year this company does. So we're very involved with. We're not trying to rip anybody off. We're just offering. Hey, you notice you have this. Do you want it? Sure, I'll take it. That's not ripping anybody off. That's just making, that's helping the customer actually. So you want to make sure you're not missing out on any opportunities. Keep everything available for, for upsell opportunities. Uh, another good thing is, yes, you got to have a DeWalt drill, but we always good to have a corded drill. So I just got this the other day, actually. It's good to have you know, a corded drill with you just in case your batteries die and your DeWalt burns out on you, which happens every once in a while. So I also want a small dustpan and broom. There's one down there, but a small dustpan and broom to clean up your mess when I'm out in the field, maybe a small little vacuum cleaner. Um, 
So we went over all that. We have a magazine rack. If you're doing automotive, you should probably try to have these uh, books on your truck. The uh, Auto Smart books. You got a two different versions: your foreign and your domestic. So those are a good set of books to have if you're doing automotive. You want those on your truck. Put this back here real quick. So keep that. Keep any uh, of your suppliers' magazines and things that you're able to to go look at when you need them. Oops, that came out pretty easily. There's an easy reader. So, if you're talking about automotive tools, you want to have uh, as much tools available to you when you're out there in the field because you never need them until you need them. All right, so here these go. <clears throat> okay, also, you want to put like a bin for your recycled brass and then like a trash can for like your recyclable metal because uh, brass is going to get you way more money than, than the regular metal will. So we have a bin there for recycled bat, brass, they go dump it in the shop. Once it fills up, we take it in. Uh, you want a little bin areas to keep track of uh, spacer rings, you know, extra uh, smart key cylinders, uh, tabs to build out on frames, if you need those. You know, blue doll things for crimping wires if you're doing camera installations, electrical tape extra mortar cylinders, scrap mortar cylinders, scrap key and knob cylinders, things that you can use and get parts for if you ever need them. Also, uh, besides all having all your tools, you need channel locks, you know, crescent wrenches, multi-screwdrivers, uh, cordless drill, uh, corded drill, um, a level, right angle, uh, long screwdrivers, short screwdrivers, spade bits, you want all the tools available in your car so that you don't have to make extra stops. You also want to have extra stock to sell. So you, you need all, all the residential hardware you may need, or, or this is all residential hardware here, but you want to have a good variety of residential hardware as well as uh, commercial hardware so that when you're out there, you can get those upsell opportunities and take care of the customer uh, while you're there. You can't offer good customer service if you're not able to take care of your customer in a timely fashion. So it serves two purposes. One, you're able to create more business. Two, you're able to take care of the customer then and not create more work and more travel time. So keep a good variety of residential deadbolts, different finishes, Schlage keyway, quick set keyway, uh, levers, single double cylinder deadbolts, knobs, things like that. Also, I want to keep a, a good variety of extra screws, long screws, short screws, metal screws, self-tappers, uh, latch plates, strike plates, I mean, you name it. You want a good variety of tail pieces. And all this has been accumulated mostly from just keeping the scrap from jobs. And we're going to throw this away. Well, let me get that piece, that piece, and that piece, put it in there. So we save the scrap in the shop. When we build out a new van, we take a lot of that and put it in the van, and now they've got years of of keeping uh, useful parts. So uh, you want to have, uh, you know, concrete screws too, things like that. <clears throat> yeah, these are really good too. These little, I don't know what they call them. What do they call them? Nylon hole plugs. But we get these at Lowe's and Home Depot. Sometimes you got to fill holes in doors. It's a perfect drill hole. You pop it in there and you can cover up those old holes. So those are good to have too. <clears throat> also, um, we have in here some Miscellaneous conduit parts if you're doing camera jobs or cover plates for sockets, things like that. Uh, you can never have enough of those kind of parts. And then, of course, you want to have a good mix of rim cylinders, mortar cylinders, key to knob cylinders, different keyways, different padlocks, things like that. And what do we got down here? Oh, yeah. So we have a good mix of commercial levers, grade two levers are kind of your go to. You got different uh, functions, storeroom, entry, passage, privacy curved lever, regular lever, and then uh, light duty, medium duty, heavy duty door closers. So there's a ton of things to put on these, these vans and uh, we like to keep them as stock as possible. That way we're making less trips to go grab parts and we're able to take care of the customer then, which allows us to do more business sooner. Also, you might wanna have a ladder, just in case a small ladder if you have enough room in your car and your vehicle, or maybe a one stepper or two stepper if you don't have any room. And of course we have our DeWalt drill, which is in here, um, and, a, and that DeWalt drill, on the main drill, you always want to have a hammer drill function so that you can, um, you know, get in the concrete because I always get, so when I buy a drill, cordless drill, I buy one that has hammer, hammer drill function on it so that I can handle anything I need to handle. Um, if you got that, then you might want an impact, impact driver. I have those also as a backup. 
Um, and I think that pretty much breaks all down. Maybe some large bolt cutters to screw, uh, cut down screws and things like that, or tail pieces, crowbar for those simple, easy containers that customers ask you to open all the time. But uh, that's mostly what we have in here. You want to also have, um, oh, these sticks up here too, by the way. We have, uh, if you're running a wire and things, you're gonna need these sticks up here, long sticks, and then maybe uh, uh, a level or something like that too. Also, if you're opening cars, you're gonna have a lockout kit, car opening kit, which we have right back here. So a car opening kit for getting in the cars, have a hands-free holder up front, so when you're driving, you're not getting anything, uh, you're not having to hold your phone. Yeah, you also wanna have uh, lubricants and glues and caulking and stuff like that too. Uh, Tri-Flow is the lubricant we use. Um, you wanna have just miscellaneous caulking for like you would around a tub or something. But if you're putting on cameras, you can seal around that or sometimes locks on gates, even if they're outside locks, you wanna seal around it sometimes. Um, and uh, lock type, just in case you need to, you never know. We need all kinds of things. So as a locksmith, your job is to figure out a solution. And a lot of the times we've never seen it and it's something new and it's good to have a variety of things. So this is a, this is a setup of how our uh, service fans are. And everybody's different. Some people offer fewer services than we do. Some offer even more. So um, stay tuned for more content. We appreciate you tuning in. Uh, thanks again. If you please hit the like button and subscribe to us, that would be great. Uh, if you have any ideas for videos, let us know and we'll make a video for you. And uh, if you would please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, or on all the social media platforms. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We work very hard at producing content for you and we appreciate the support as always.